All right, YouTube. She is in the game. Cyber Slayer Alice, the newest addition to the character roster in Last Claudia. Uh, we got a little sneak peek of her yesterday, and now we get to actually see how she looks in the game. Today's video is pretty simple. Uh, I just want to kind of analyze her and see if it's worth spending crystals for myself to try and get her. I've got, as you can see, I've got about 16,000 crystals up here. There's also something I want to do, and that is turn the game music off. Just shut up. Beautiful. There we go. Now I can put some nice background music, and then the cuts don't make it sound all choppy and all that good stuff. Here we are. This is the Descent of Heroes Festival. Alice. Cyber Slayer Alice. She's here. And I've really contemplated summoning for her because, I mean, she's cool. Right? Here's the, uh, here's the arc that we saw yesterday, Killing Machines in-game. Looking clean. Looking clean. Strength 15%. We saw all this. We read all this. And of course, homegirl herself, Alice. She's got a heavy defense stat. 1,200 looks pretty big. This is fully, fully maxed out everything, right, is what we get to see here. So, I want to show y'all a little secret, a little tips and tricks. Many of you guys who are watching this probably already know, but... There's a great resource to analyze whether you should pick up a character. I mean, you do what you want. You play the game how you want. But if you're looking for efficiency, I always look for tips from the experts, which I'm very confident in looking over here on the Discord. So over here on the Discord, we've got a lot of good people. It's actually a pretty poppin' Discord server. Which is why I figured, you know, why not start making videos on it? There's definitely an audience that's still alive and breathing, right? It's not a completely dead game yet. Uh, and hopefully not ever, because I'm enjoying it. So they've got a super handy little tab here called the Pinned Messages. Now I know my camera's kind of in the way, so I'm going to try and pay attention to where I'm scrolling. But if I open that up, this guy, Lian. So this was posted on the 8th, two days ago. Uh, if I'm a little tired sounding or out of focus, uh, I had a late night and I just woke up and I've yet to drink my coffee. So should you pull Alice and Killing Machines edition? I'm assuming they do this for every new character, which is amazing. I'll be coming here every time as a beginner trying to figure out if I should be pulling for these characters. But he goes through, breaks her down, kind of makes it all understandable. So. If you're a basic man like myself, you have a nice reference here that sums it all up. Here we go. So I'm just going to jump into the pros, right? Great SC saves. I'm not sure what that means. SC is the skill cooldown. Or skill. I don't. I still don't know what SC means. I, I need to please drop a comment. Tell me what SC means. Light PDPS, I, I don't know what PDPS it means either, I've seen that thrown out a lot. And tank, right, that's what we discussed in the video yesterday, she is a tank. Two modes that enable her to do different things, that does intrigue me. Strong traits to enhance survivability. Self-sufficient skill, release ether that acts as a honey elixir for herself. Honey elixir I know is a very powerful ability, I don't know exactly what it does. Strong special damage. Comes with auto brave speed and critical. You need to learn what those are. The cons, no damage cap raises. So let me scroll down a little more so we can see. No damage cap raises for skills excluding special at all. This is foreign knowledge to me, but if you know what this means, hopefully it helps you. Too reliant on specials, which means it takes longer to come up and fire off. That kind of reminds me of the newest Lily that came out. She seems so broken when you're popping off her special abilities, but it takes a while to get them. Her auto brave, speed, and critical will be removed upon incapacitation. Okay, so you want to avoid getting stunned with her. I can translate that into layman's terms. Here we go, Killing Machines Art Pros. Extremely good art characteristics that cater to special, so it's a very good combo, obviously, with Alice. 
strong learnable skills for other units is not a UR. Uh, the, the, the fan base has seemed to turn on UR for some reason. Um, I'm sure I'll learn more about that as I continue to play. Some of the cons is permanent, which means there's no demand to pull specifically for the arc. I guess that's a con in the sense of marketing, maybe. Some learnable skills are rather redundant and we have them on lesser arts. And then here's the consensus. Recommended four free to play to skip if they owned Roland. I don't own Roland. Alice is a strong PDPS with tanking abilities and strong SC saves and serves as a potent light unit, but Roland exists and he has innate damage cap raise and came with El Dravana, which is a much better arc for specials than Alice's SSR. Hmm. 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 So, this guy, Leon, thank you for providing us the information. Um, El Dravana, do I have that in game? Go to my SSR arcs. I do not. I do not. I don't know if I have any decent ones here. Um, I don't think I do. I think probably someone would tell me to re-roll if they saw my account, but I'm just sticking with what we got because we were able to pull uh, my kid, my boy, right here. Anyway, let's get back to the point of the video. So this would be the banner that I'd be able to summon on. That's a lot of wood. This is the banner I'd be able to summon on. Right, these are the ones, these are the banners that require just your standard crystals, not like these other banners that confuse a bunch of people, including myself when I first started playing. You, you have to pay for crystals. What are they even, are they called crystals? Are they called gems? Crystals. You do have to pay for your crystals in order to summon on the step up banner, as well as they have just a regular banner that's a paid version. I don't understand the logic. Adis, if you could please explain to us what the thought process is there, that would be greatly appreciated, I think, to a lot of players. As a beginner beginner, right, I don't even have, if I summoned for her, I wouldn't even be able to dump resources into her, and I'm not even close to the end game where you can actually think about team building and how each character affects the others when they're within a certain team. I saw someone in Discord mention that they were waiting for the next UR to come out. I'm thinking that's the crazy OP busted units that I'd like to pull and will be useful. As soon as I'm done upgrading a core team that I'm working on now, then I can say, okay, who's my next best option to upgrade who's going to enhance my overall gameplay? That's the unit I'm going to be waiting for. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she would be a staple as far as the units I have. I mean, we can take a look. I, obviously, I can't attest to any of these characters and their maximum efficiencies, but I know I got this guy. I got him just because I'm a huge fan of Ray. I summoned for him because I'm a huge fan of Ray, and I was able to pull two copies of him in one multi, which I think is insane. And so, to me, that was a sign. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to keep playing this game if it's going to treat me like this. I'm getting off topic. I'm going off on a tangent. That pretty much covers it for this video, it's just my decision whether to summon or not. Uh, I kind of gave my reasoning. Please, tell me if you're summoning, uh, if you think it's worth it. You've seen some of my art, some of my characters. I'd love to get any opinions, feedback to, uh, of anyone who plays this game extensively. And look out for that tier list review I got coming later today. So, with that being said, y'all know the drill. Work hard, play harder. I'll see you in the next one.